the project I have here is a 1913-1914 uh, King Baritone. And this has been sent in for full restoration. So it's going to be fully overhauled to make look like new. So all the lacquer as it stands will be removed. Dents and scratches removed, buffed and polished. New guard wires installed here and here. Dents taken out. Rebuffed and lacquered. Now this lead pipe, the mouth pipe here, is um, it's cracked and it's cracked very close to the receiver and that's a bit of a problem trying to patch that so the best way to go about this repair is simply uh, removing the tube and we will bend a new lead pipe uh, and construct that and move forward that way so I'm going to demonstrate how to do a lead pipe bend and installation and then I'll show some of this process of r this restoration before and after. Stay tuned. So with this um, old baritone it's in really sound condition. There's not any real brass rot that I can detect except where that crack occurred and that brass might have gotten a little bit rotty and that's why it cracked open there. Um, so we need to replace that and the way to do this is to you're not going to uh, go to the Con Selmer website and find a king mouth pipe for an old instrument like this so you have to create one you have to bend one and the way to do that is to select a tube that is tapered and um, is filled with pitch now pitch is like an asphalt compound um, uh, without the stones and what we'll do is we'll select a pipe that will best suit our needs now Allied Supply Corporation and Elkhart Elkhorn, Wisconsin, uh, about an hour from me, um, sells various tubes and they actually sell a baritone mouth pipe tube but the overall length is just a little on the short side and it will be really hard to muscle and to bend and this tube is kind of rather small on diameter uh, so I've selected their model A124 to do the job. The A124 is a, a French horn branch or it can be used for other purposes, but it's got a nice taper to it. And I have to go from uh, 596, so let's call it 600, uh, down to about 511. So we're going to have to pick the large side. What did I say, six? 611. Yeah, actually about 600, yeah. Okay, so we're going to go we're going to be taking the pipe essentially from here and then we're going to bend the tube so that it goes to the receiver. Now, it might be a little bit large overall dimensions than the original, especially at the starting point. However, I believe that that's going to work out just fine and I can modify the receiver by putting that on the lathe and um, dealing dealing with dealing it, uh, with it that way cutting open the receiver a little bit or just replacing the receiver but I think I'll work with that receiver to keep it as original as possible and then uh, this so this this branch will be bent and shaped to exact specifications of this one and then the pitch will be melted out and then the, the pipe will be buffed and just like the rest of the instrument fully fully refinished and overhauled so that's will be fun get this guard wire off because it stabbed me a couple times and it, it's gonna be replaced anyway so I want to take off the uh, mouth pipe now. Okay. 
Yeah, that's pretty rotten. Definitely the right call to replace the pipe. There we go. So when bending a new mouth pipe, as I mentioned, you need to select a tube that will give you your diameter down where the pipe fits into the uh, instrument and then the other end uh, that will fit the receiver and there's going to be a little bit of compromising going on so you may wind up cutting the receiver open to to fit the mouth pipe or doing some other adjustments to the pipe now <clears throat> mouth pipes bending them thin wall tubing thin wall brass tubing and when i say thin wall i'm talking about the the uh, the thickness of of the the brass not the diameter but the thickness of the wall it's around 20 thousandths of an inch so tubing either has pitch fill in it uh, the other option to bend is a product called Cerro Bend C-E-R-R-O and it's an alloy that melts at 156 degrees Fahrenheit and what you do in a case like that where you would have a tube uh, maybe you have a straight wall uh, non tapered tube just straight straight tubing straight wall tube you would coat that inside of that tube with like olive oil plug one end and then heat the cerro bend up so it's liquefied and then pour it in and then it'll cool rather quickly and solidify and then you can bend that that's pretty strong stuff this pitch is a little less takes a little less muscle but you also want to um, consider you know how big the tube is and do you have any real estate on this end to bend because it's going to take some pressure the pitch you need to melt out with a torch and it gets really stinky and creates a lot of smoke and it's rather toxic so you want to do it outside or in a room that has a hood or a powered vent that'll extract the smoke and then wear a mask and don't wear a dust filter mask because uh, that won't help you from from the fumes and stuff but if you can do it outside and stay out of the smoke, you're probably better off. So we've got it marked. We're going to start the process of copying this tube. It's going to be a 90 degree bend. I've marked the apex of the bend of the 90. So the center of the 90 degree bend. And this is where it go into the, the brass tubing. And then this end will be shaped and bent to fit the receiver. Now there's really nothing like a, the soft part of your knee to to get the process started. And you have to kind of eyeball this as you go. Now that's a little more than 90 degrees. That's okay. That's pretty close. All right, now that I got that first bend made, I need to cut it and it's going to fit down inside that tube about a quarter of an inch there's a number of ways to cut you can use a band saw you can use a miniature chop saw you could use a dremel tool with a carbide bit or you can just use a one of these back saws pitch has already started to get melty on me when I'm putting friction on it. All right. Well, as they say, the best laid plans. <clears throat> I had to change mouthpiece or mouth pipes. I had to use an Allied A150 because the other one. This is embarrassing. The uh, the end I thought I had totally had enough taper, but the the receiver wasn't going to fit it even if I cut open the receiver there wasn't enough real estate on the receiver so basically scrapped out that A124 and I'm going with the A150 now um, and this these are really hard to bend because you use up a pretty much the entire pipe so you'd think I'd never done this before let's try this I think we're getting in there. It 
So sometimes the tubing does kink a little bit in there. And we'll open that up with some dent balls and tap it with a hammer. And um, of course the exterior is not a problem. That'll be sanded and buffed.
Brass is a single phase alloy. It doesn't need quenching after you anneal it. Um, it gets it stays soft whether it's quenched immediately or is air cooled. If you have more curiosity about different alloys, you can look it up. But a single phase alloy such as brass doesn't matter. I've done uh, personal test tests as well, just to see how it works, um, and it works fine.
So then we just did a bunch of sanding with like 220, 320, down to about 400 grit sandpaper, and then buffed it with some more Tripoli compound. And some people may say, look at that and say, isn't that an awful lot of buff buffing and you're sanding, you're removing material. Well, anybody who wants an instrument overhauled or refinish it, uh, refinished comes to the realization, or they should, that we're going to be removing some brass. Unless you want the pits to remain. If you want all the pits and scratches to remain and just kind of look generally shiny from 10 feet away, you know, then you can just lightly buff it, color it, and <laughs> lacquer it. Um, that has its place, but not on a real restoration. Um, you're going to remove material. And the sanding, you actually wind up removing less brass because you're, you're getting, or what brass you do remove, it, it's being removed more evenly rather than like grinding on a pit. I mean, you can dish out a piece of brass with a grinding wheel or a buffing wheel in, in no time flat if you're not careful. So the idea is to sand it where you'll get a, a much cleaner and more uniform looking buff. Uh, if you just buff on pits and stuff, it takes a long time to really make it look right and it's not really a great way so it's the sanding part is kind of important in the burnishing as well we still have some work to do here there's still pitting that i can see um, so we're going to do a little more sanding and a lot more buffing in there.
from season to okay, season. friends, yeah, we um, season season. we got most of our mounting done. Yeah. We got the braces on, the branches on, back together, and now it's just ready for some ragging. So I'll rag this out with some Tripoli and Rouge cloth and some wicking compound and clean up those areas where there's some solder tinning and staining left. And we'll um, do a kind of a final buff on this and then a color buff before we go for lacquer. So I've uh, still got some work to do on the bell. And bell is still got some pits and a few things that are... Well, this is where I, I want to take care of only, kind of balancing the view of like perfection and, um, and structural integrity. But I still got more I want to do on that to really kind of make it look pretty. So anyway, we're going to drag this out. I'll show that next. Yeah. It, it's sort of like a Brasso. This is for copper and brass. So it's, it's a good product. And I'll just have it on some wicking. We'll go with this. So you get paid to get dirty. This color buffing is a messy job. So anyway, this is pretty much ready to go. I need to get the bell on and the lead pipe on and then it will get one more final buff. Um, if there's any spots that I notice, they'll get touched up with Tripoli e or yellow compound and the rest will get uh, just loose, uh, loose wheel rouge. I say loose wheel, this is what I'm talking about. Nice puffy wheel. Anyway, I got the bell. The bell. Got the bell complete here. I, it's important to stay off the engraving. Um, now this instrument had never been overhauled, to my knowledge. Um, but it's important to stay off of that engraving, except for maybe one or two quick passes. To brighten the brass and then uh, hit it with a color wheel to make it shiny like the rest of it but otherwise the little pits and stuff they just kind of stay hidden in that engraving and um, that turned out really quite pretty so get this brace right here I'm just gonna tack it and then I'm going to burnish it down some more because it needs to fit a little tighter. It's pretty good right now. But... Yeah, I think that's alright. scrape out the uh, excess brass on the inside. Could do it on the lathe too. The tube that accepts the lead pipe, it's got a little crack in the back and 
that's what this ferrule is going to be for. It's going to cover that. Can took some stress over the years, and that will correct that issue. Let's go ahead and solder this in place. A little flux. It is pretty much given a lot of good life and use over the years. Now the lead pipe will go in and then we'll finish that mounting project. Okay, so I got the, the pipe just tacked in place at the uh, first slide. And I just want to tack it here. I don't really want any tension on it. So we're heating up the brass, the bell, and the pipe. And we want that just touch a little solder in there. There we are. And. Let them install the mouth pipe receiver brace over here. So we've reached the point where I've degreased the instrument. It's been color buffed, degreased. I've got the tubes plugged, and now it's time for lacquering. I've mixed up some gold lacquer, so there's going to be a nice gold tint to it. And you can see how the gold tint that they have. I've also done the slides. So, we're going to go in there, we're going to do the inside of the bell flare, and let that air dry to the touch before I put it on the bell and then do the rest of the instruments. But hey, enough of my yakking. Let's boogie. Here you can see the slides have also been done in that nice gold lacquer. And notice the color differentiation between that and just the raw brass. The raw brass is rather stark looking.
I love it. Lacquer. So we'll let that air dry. Uh, five, ten minutes to the touch and go and inspect it. The nice thing about spraying gold tinted lacquer is you can tell if you're getting a little too heavy where sometimes the clear, you know, it's just so clear that it's hard to see where it's building up much. So I think that uh, that'll turn out nice. The other nice thing about gold lacquer is when you're buffing and you're doing your color buffing, sometimes you've got some sheen marks in there. The really, these aren't, they're not even really scratches. They're just, it's a sheen issue and that really helps to mask them and but it just has a much richer and prettier look I think so um, anyway we'll see what it looks like when we're done here and take some pictures and start the final assembly I almost forgot the finger buttons you have to do the finger buttons or it won't look right Is that right, Keith? You've got to do the finger buttons, don't you? If you don't do the finger buttons, then it's not right. It's not complete, is it? It's a complete t catastrophe. What are you looking at? A couple of more uh, small details. Um, I've got to do the, the valve stems in a water key. And, um, a what? You're still here? One little repair to do here for my lovely wife. Oh, bugger. Uh, let's just see. The T ball has come on salt. Well, it was brazed. As a child, it was brazed together or spot welded. Let's see if I can do this without torching my hand. I don't know. Hey, it worked. See that? Now that's silver solder or braised, whatever. And there you have it. And Good for many more cups of tea. Right, honey? Yes, the honey-do list never ends, doesn't it? Well, there it is. Final lacquer job. Gold-tinted lacquer. Engraving still nicely intact. Right in here. Nice way to use up... Uh, well, time in the shop during the COVID-19 shutdown everywhere. It um, has affected us all, and this was really nice to be able to have a major project like this to work on. Normally, I would have a hard time uh, even accepting a, a major overhaul like this during May, or certainly not in the summer, it wouldn't happen. Um, but um, yeah, this was a good, this was, this was fort fortuitous timing for everyone, I think, so. There it is, the finished instrument. Remember what it was like before.